Okay, today we're going to be um, studying the last topic in uh, this, this section of the class on torsion. And we're going to be now looking at how does the torsion formula work, right? How do we handle thin walled tubes? Okay, so we still have a, a um, so we still have a prismatic cross section, but now we have a closed tubular shape with thin walls, and uh, we want to know can we apply any of the things that we've learned up to this point in this case? So the requirements are. We have to still be prismatic, so that requirement remains. We have to have a closed tubular shape. Okay. Have to have thin walls. And then just note that. Um, this formula that we're going to derive, or that we're going to describe, um, is only accurate for thin members for small t, where t is the thickness. Okay. All right. So let's let's write down the formula. So we have the we have a thin walled tube. Okay. We, we normally assume that we have a circular cross section, but I'll show you in a minute that that's not strictly necessary to be able to use, get some information from this formula. That right there, we're gonna call the thickness T. And then we have this median line, we call it. This median line. And the distance to this median line, which is just halfway between the outer surface and the inner surface, that's what we're going to use as our radius. So it's kind of an average radius. And then we'll say that AM is the area enclosed by the median line. Okay, so it's the area enclosed in here between the dotted lines here. Okay. okay, so that's the geometry. And then we can start with our the torsion formula that we derived last time, and we can make some simplifications and some assumptions, and I'll just write down the formula. You don't have to worry about deriving this. Um, it's, not, it's not that important. Um, let me erase that. So we have that tau, the shear stress, is now going to be equal to T over 2 times the thickness times the area enclosed by the median line. Okay. And you can reference the book if you'd like to know more about where that comes from. Okay, so just a little, just a little aside. Let me ask you a question to see if you understand the basic concepts here. Let's say we didn't have a circular cross section. Okay, let's say we have a cross section like this that's thin, thick, thin. Okay, it's supposed to be the same here, even though my drawing is poor. That these are both T1. This is T1, and this is T2, T2. Now the question that I want to ask you is just conceptually, where does the maximum shear stress occur? Okay, when, when will the maximum shear stress occur? And so you can look at this formula. Okay, this, this area here is just the area enclosed by the median line for this guy. 
But notice that the thickness is in the denominator. So as the thickness gets smaller, the shear stress gets bigger. So in fact, this part is going to be more fragile because the shear stress will increase because the thickness is smaller for t because t1 is less than less than t2. Okay, so that just kind of gives you a little bit of insight into how this works. So if you do end up having a cross section where you may have changing thicknesses, this is one way that you can use this formula to give you some engineering insight into the object and the shear stresses. Okay, now let's just quickly change gears and again for thin walled tubes let's let's talk about strain energy okay so we have strain energy now thin walled tubes and we can write down the formula for thin walled tubes to be t squared l over 2 g j okay where j is what's called a torsion constant. It's kind of like given the, you know, all the geometry will be in here. The geometry of the cross section will be inside of j, and it's kind of saying, how does this j resist uh, the, the torque? So the torsion constant, if you have a circular cross section, it's just 4t, or I think this is actually in general for any cross section, as long as it, it obeys the assumptions that we described at the very beginning of the lecture. Okay, where now Lm is the length of the median line. All right, so this is the, notice you still have the squared term, okay? We're squaring the load. This is the length. This is the shear modulus of elasticity, and then this is where all the geometry is of the cross-section. Okay, great. Now, um, just to kind of give you some familiarity with J, we can derive j for a circular cross-section. Okay, so if, if we end up having a circular cross-section, then we can simplify j. So in that case, j for a circular cross-section is going to be equal to, now in this case, am, am for a circle is just going to be pi r squared, where again, we have this median line, and that's r. Okay. So pi r squared is the area enclosed by the median line. And the length of the median line, of course, is just 2 pi r. So we can take these guys and plug them in, right? which gives us Uh, 4t pi squared r to the fourth, right? Because this is just the this is the, you have the square term here, okay? Over l, which is 2 pi r, so one of the r's cancels, so this becomes 3, and then this becomes. So we end up with 2t, and then we also get rid of one of the pi's, 2t pi r cubed. Okay, so that's the torsion constant if we have a circular cross section. Okay, all right, and that's for the strain energy for thin walled tube. Okay, let's just do one problem here to kind of show 
why we like thin-walled tubes, why we engineer things at times to use thin-walled tubes, is because what we'll end up seeing is that they are more efficient. So let's do a problem that demonstrates this. Let's say we have a thin-walled tube, right? something like that. Right? We have the median line. And this we're going to call R1. And then we'll call this thickness. So that's our tube. And we'll call that problem one. Okay, the tube is going to be our first problem. And then let's compare it to a um, a solid bar. So this is now solid. This is our second problem. And we're going to assume that it are made of the same material. They're made of the same material, and they have have the same um, area, cross-sectional area, and length. Okay the same area, same length, they're made of the same material. The only difference is that one is a thin walled tube and one is a solid bar. And what we want to do is we want to determine the ratio um, u1, u2, if tau max, if the maximum shear stress is the same in both cross sections. Okay, and so this will kind of give us an idea of efficiency, right? So if you have uh, the exact same shear stress, we want to determine which one carries more energy, which one has translated that into more energy. And you can probably you probably already know the answer that it's going to be the thin walled tube. And so we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. So let's start by figuring out the um, we're going to figure out u1 okay for the tube. All right. So in this case, a m is equal to pi r1 squared. J is equal to two pi r1 cubed times t. a is equal to 2 pi r1 t. And so we end up that tau max using our torsion formula for thin walled tubes is going to be t over 2TAM, and then we plug in and simplify. We get T is 2 pi R1 cubed T, which means if we solve for the, the torque required to generate tau max, and remember they're going to be the same between both problems, we get 2 pi R1 squared t tau max. Okay, now given t, we can compute u1. Okay, so u1 is equal to t squared l over 2gj. So if we plug everything in, and I won't go through every step, I'll let you do that. We'll plug in our expression for t. l remains the same between both. We have the expression for j up above. We end up with pi r1, uh, let's see, pi r1 t tau max squared l over g. Okay. But we notice um, just another simplification here. Uh, 2 pi r 1 t is equal to um, 
the area of the cross section. Uh, sorry, the uh, let's see, yeah, the area of this, the total area here of the cross section, cross sectional area. Okay, that's two pi r. Yeah, that's because it's the two pi r one is the circumference, and then we multiply it by t. Okay. All right. And so what that means is r1t is equal to a over 2 pi. Okay, and so we have r1t here, so we can take this and plug it in and then simplify, giving us that u1 is equal to a tau max squared l over to g. Okay, so there's u1. Okay. Now let's do u2. Here's the second problem we're going to do. This is the solid bar. Okay. And again, I'll let you fill in some of these details, but now we're just back to the simple stuff we did at the very beginning of this, this unit on torsion. It's tr2 over i rho, okay, which is equal to 2t over pi r2 cubed. Then again, we solve for t. So t is equal to pi r2 cubed tau max over 2. Okay. Now, since we know the torque, we can compute u2 t squared L over 2gi rho. Plug in our expression for t and our expression for i sub rho and simplify. And then this you just look up in the back of the book, right? For a circular cross section. That's pi r2 squared tau max squared L over 4g. Again, we play the same trick where pi, so but pi r2 squared is equal to a, right? So this thing here becomes a, and now we have an expression that looks exactly like the one on the left. If you compare this guy to this guy, notice that there's a factor of two difference, okay? And so if you do u1 divided by u2, it equals 2. Okay. So the, there's twice as much strain energy in the circular tube for the same amount of shear stress. And so that's one way to examine um, the, you know, why circular tubes are often used for efficiency. All right, so just to summarize so far, the lesson for today, we're just taking the basic principles we learned last time, where I did a complete derivation of the torsion formula, going through the geometry and the kinematics, the constitutive modeling, and then equilibrium. I want you to be able to reproduce that. That's important for you to understand at least at some point, how we derive formulas, because it will also mean that you will learn all of the different meanings for all the variables. But today, I'm not going to require that. You can refer to the book for more information on where this formula comes from, but uh, in this case, I just want you to be able to use it and to understand the basic ideas behind the torsion formula for thin-walled tubes as well as strain energy for thin-walled tubes, and then, of course, understand the basic idea that the reason we use thin-walled tubes is because they have an improved efficiency in many kinds of, in many applica torsional applications.